So with Sean Bear, is he gonna be on, on Zoom? I think it's further down the road anyway, see. <laughs> so whenever you're ready, Glenn, just give me the cue and we'll go. Okay. All right. Um, God bless you, brothers. Thank you for coming. I especially want to thank everybody that's here at Queen's House, all the presenters, and also those who are joining us online. One of the things when I talked to Jerry Jeannie and Musha when we sent this out to the province, we basically were saying that we're not saying that in Saskatoon we're better than anybody else. We're just saying that if you want to join us on Zoom and maybe get something out of this so that you can have uh, your own district meetings or your own council meetings, um, just is all we're saying by that. So we're not saying that, we're just we want this understood right at the crack, okay? So that we're not better than anybody else here. We're just, we're just doing our thing here like we've done for the last number of years. Now, one of the things that I always say when I'm, when I'm uh, doing insulation of officers and I've changed the words, this is what I say. Worthy brothers of Holy Mother Church. This is who we are. Through our baptism, we are a holy men of God. And so it's so important for us to remember that so that when we move ahead, we know who we are before Christ and before uh, within our church. I'm gonna call on Father Dennis to give us our opening prayer. Okay. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. We pray that you would inspire our conversations, especially during these unprecedented times that we're living through, that you will give us the strength and the courage to be good witnesses for your son, Jesus. We pray that you would touch our families and our friends and protect us so that we may be always of service to you in all that we do. Help us to speak only the good things people ought to hear. And we thank you for this day and we ask you to bless our meeting. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. So this is all the way. Okay. Okay, so um, one of the reasons I asked Father Dennis to join us is because Father Dennis is also the chaplain for the Knights of Columbus chapter. So uh, Father Dennis has been a personal friend of mine for many, many, many years, and I appreciate um, everything that Father Dennis has taught me over the years. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna call upon our state deputy Joe Riffle. Joe is gonna zoom in from uh, on the Zoom platform for us. So we're just gonna go to Joe here, okay? Thank you very much, for the district deputy Adrian. Uh, Father Dennis, for the district deputies, my brother Knights. Happy New Year! So, uh, I just want to welcome everyone 
um, for coming out tonight. I want to thank uh, Adrian for reaching out to me and and uh, and inviting everyone in the province to attend. Because uh, like a few different reasons in my mind is uh, we have new district deputies and they're not exactly sure what to do. So this is a, a great way to help train some of our uh, newer district deputies. So it's it is appreciated. Um, plus, as uh, we've got people from Regina, people from out of out of town. They might attend uh, their own district meeting and learn something different, learn, learn a different perspective. So every training opportunity, every learning opportunity is, uh, is hopefully is, it will always be successful. So thank you for the Saskatoon DDs and uh, Brother Glenn for hosting this in Saskatoon. Uh, I know I'm going to, the organizing group has a lot of stuff they want to cover tonight. I just want to touch on... Uh, four key things in my mind, just that are that are important at this time. Um, the McGivney 2020 free online membership. I'm hoping that everyone is aware of that, that that was extended until June 30th. Uh, please invite everyone that uh, is eligible to join. It, it's the best time. Uh, we were. I was very surprised and pleasantly pleased that they extended it till June 30th. Um, Supreme recognized that uh, we can't do our usual podium pulpit announcements and the opportunities are, are different than we're, what we're used to in past years. So uh, I want to thank Supreme for, for allowing that to happen. I'd like to encourage councils, their executive members and all of their council members to attend the various Supreme webinars. Um, it's uh, if, if you've ever attended any of them, they're about an hour long. Uh, they provide a, a lot of information to which I find very useful, not just not just as a state deputy, but as a as, as a brother knight. You know, as you can always learn those little tips on uh, why things are the way are they are and how to do them, how how to do things better. So I'd encourage, remind people to uh, to attend any of the uh, sessions that they can. Um, you know, there's a uh, January, um, it, it's on the, I know Brother Peter has it on the state website. We send it out with the newsletters by electronically. So please share those with your members. Uh, hope the key one, which is uh, the latest one, which there was a webinar just before Christmas was the new council meeting formats. Uh, just the way they've uh, been tweaked. And that was all based on surveys done back in the fall. Uh, everyone, I think there was 35,000 survey submissions and that's what they, they came up with. So I'd encourage, you know, it's I kind of following through on a few of them. It makes makes a lot of sense oh, it's a nice meeting. To, uh, to streamline the meetings just uh, with the overall goal of making them a little bit shorter, a little bit crisper, but hopefully a little bit more inviting to all members to want to attend because a lot of the meat potatoes should be taken care of at the uh, at the planning meeting. For, for terms. So, and the last thing I really want to encourage uh, is a safe environment program compliance to encourage the council executives to uh, do their best to be compliant. Um, this program's not going away. Um, if you know, it's been around for, I think we're in year seven now with the uh, safe environment. And uh, just to remind people, this isn't at the request of the Supreme Knight of the Supreme Board. This is at the request of the American and Canadian bishops, um, making sure the Knights are behaving and doing their best to protect the young and the vulnerable, that's all ages, to, uh, to do things that will protect those people and as well protect the brother knights themselves. There is a, a safe way to protect um, the knights. It, it's uh, if you've ever taken the course, it's it's uh, it's once you've taken it, it makes a lot of sense on things that we do. We just take some things for granted. Uh, we just I just want to really reinforce that people do that, and I know that's um, I went out with the emails from uh, where the district deputy Adrian and someone else will touch on more of the details. But those are the four key things I like to maybe make sure that uh, people take extra notes on. So um, again, I'm, if you've got enough presenters, I don't need to keep talking. I wanna, again, I wanna thank everyone for coming out. 
Uh, thank you, Father Dennis, for enough for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, be our be the Saskatoon um, chapter spiritual leader. Uh, we need you now as much as ever, especially more more now than ever with COVID. So, with the condition of the inability to get to mass as often as we wish we could. So, thank you all, and and uh, in the spirit of the Blessed Michael McGivney, please pray for us. All right. Thank you, Worthy State Deputy Joe. Um, now, as Joe mentioned as well, one of the things that's happened in Saskatoon here, um, Glenn Hauser has been instrumental in all of the stuff that we've done as district deputies, the Zoom platform, I mean, the exemplifications, the Fort Sunday Rosaries, and every other thing that we put together, Glenn has been at the forefront to help us, and God bless him for doing that. The other thing I just want to mention before I call uh, Brother Marty is that I just got an email from Sean Cher. So Sean is saying that uh, we have brought in coats for kids and they're at $200 a box. So they're here in Saskatoon. Uh, they're at a compound that we have here. So if you're wanting coats for kids, please get a hold of Sean Cher, $200. They're Canadian coats. They're very, very good coats. All right, I'm gonna call upon our cluster leader, uh, Marty Nogo. So just so you know, here in Saskatoon, there are six districts within our cluster. So this district 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. And Marty is uh, the head of this cluster. So Marty, please come forward, thank you. Thank you, Worthy DD Adrian. So, to Worthy State Deputy Jory Paul, Father Dennis, uh, to all district deputies, all grand knights, all brother knights, all guests, good evening to all of you. So, in behalf of the State Board and uh, being a cluster leader, I will start my short talk with a verse from the Bible that says, For we live by faith, not by sight. Number 2 Corinthians 5. So what does this mean? Under our situation right now, the coronavirus is invisible to the naked eye. Yet we fear its great power and ability to wreck our lives. Jesus, though, is also not visible to us. But as believers in Christ, we know that Jesus lives in us. So why are we treating this virus as if it's bigger than God? Fear seems to be the culprit here. Without God's ability to help us get through this pandemic, and believe what we see on the news instead. We think it will never end. My brother and I, please try to keep your faith strong during this time and remind yourself that Jesus is also working behind the scenes to help get us through this difficult time and he has not left us. As a night, we live by our faith and I can say we are lucky. Did you think of that? And why? Because we are being tested right now. At the very moment, we are in the situation to prove our worthiness, our faith as Catholic. So as for me, we are all lucky to show that our faith is real. But many people and many and maybe many from us are glued to the TV or to our phones for hours a day so that we can consume all the information we can about the coronavirus. What are the politicians saying? What is the new death count? Is there a vaccine on the way? What will happen tomorrow? So brother Knights, do you think it's a common theme during quarantine to focus on what the world is saying and not on what God wants us to hear. 
We all know God is able to give us peace through this time if we turn our troubled hearts to him. It is easy for him to take away the fear and replace it with his love. It is the beautiful gift that ours for the taking, but only if we get off our phones long enough to ask him. How about let's check ourselves. In one day, how many times do we talk to him? Around us, we need to show our faith, not only by words, but by deeds, by helping our neighbors without restriction, without hesitation, and without fear. And by doing this, we will not have a hard time to encourage them to join the nice and be one of us. They will join voluntarily when they see us doing what they can, what they expect us to do. Let us show the true empathy to all our neighbors. Let them feel our presence in their lives. God bless us all. Be back, Jesus. Thank you, Brother Marty. Marty has been really exemplified within the province here because he has brought in so many nights within the last number of years. And so um, he speaks from his heart and he does what he says. I'm going to talk, ask uh, Father Dennis if he wants to give us his reflection now. Other well, nights, the, uh, we just heard some things about COVID-19. And uh, I just like to make a reflection in two parts. First, on COVID-19 and our attitude towards it. And secondly, Bishop Mark in the Diocese of Saskatoon and his plan for February 2nd dedication to St. Joseph. So concerning COVID-19, it's very complex. And we realize how society is highly complex. We got working parents who want kids to go back to school because school closures directly impacts them. But the teachers don't want the schools to open because COVID-19 spreading around in their schools directly impact them. Then we have health services and especially their staff, they want full lockdown because sick COVID patients directly impacts them. Then we have businesses and their owners who want to carry on as normal because lockdown directly impacts them. Then we have people with physical health problems and they want everyone to stay socially distant because catching COVID could kill them. And then we have people with mental health problems and depression, and I'm seeing more and more of this. They want people to spend time with them because isolation can kill them. So we have all kinds of conflicts. Some people can't wait for the vaccine to come and, and it'll be the very thing that'll help to cure them and bring things back to normal. We have other people that are terrified of the vaccine because they believe it could actually harm them. We all are going through this but none of us is going through it in the same way. It impacts us all differently. And some people face like crippling financial circumstances. And I've met a number of them. And uh, often they, um, they really feel uh, heartbreak. Uh, on the other hand, with the loss of loved ones, we don't all have to agree whether it is best because what is best for us isn't necessarily best for everyone. And we don't have to understand what other people are going through, but we do need to stick together and we need to love one another and be very patient and very kind. And I'm hearing a lot of rather negative comments about different groups of people, because really we're all impacted differently by this invisible virus, as has been pointed out. So we need to be mindful that some things go our way, then they won't go another person's way. 
ultimately what the scriptures teach us is to love one another, be patient with one another, not to be judgmental. And I think that brings me to something that Bishop Mark is uh, really quite interested in implementing here in the Diocese of Saskatoon on February 2nd, if I've got that date right. And it's about Jesus being presented in the temple by Joseph and by Mary. And you'll notice in that feast of the presentation on February 2nd, the, um, there's two old people that speak. There's Simeon and there's um, Anna. And they are people who actually see Jesus and they prophesy, they, they talk about him. So you and I should reflect on this truth that baby Jesus, he's only 40 days old, he's brought to the temple, he can't speak for himself, he's unable to do that. And so God sends us, particularly the Knights of Columbus, to speak about this child who came for the forgiveness of sins. And that he really is the answer. You know, I was reading in the scripture the other day about how the Israelites were rebelling against God. And so a plague was sent to them. And finally, after many had died, Phineas gets up and he pleads with God to bring it to an end. And God does so. I think we should pray every day for this pandemic to end. There are many, many people suffering. I have one friend, a young lady. She's 22, lives in Uganda. And I just got an email and she's now dying she's from the virus. Her twin sister isn't, and they're in the same family. So it can hit somebody one way and another person isn't affected as much by it. So we brother knights need to be willing to speak about the child Jesus, about our savior. When he grew up, of course, he was eloquent in speaking about the kingdom of God, but we need to be those voices for him today. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to help unloosen our tongues and speak words of faith. As I just mentioned a moment ago, we live by faith, not by sight. So I'd just like to conclude with a little prayer that'll help us prepare for that feast, particularly in the Diocese of Saskatoon, and also to help all of us through the struggles of this pandemic. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, help each one of us to love Jesus so much that it will cause each one of us more distress if we don't speak about him than if we do speak about him. Help us to be good mouthpieces for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Dennis. Uh, on Saturday night, I was at Mass at Lourdes, and I had the opportunity to talk to a young man and his mother. And you know, when we talk about the Knights of Columbus, we talk about any, anything that we do in the church. The first thing that we need to do, and it's paramount that we do this, is to give our life to Christ. If we accept Christ in our lives, and ask God to come into our life and be Lord of our lives, all these things that we talk about will be added to us. That is first and foremost for any man, any woman within the Catholic Church. The Protestants talk about it a lot. And, and the Catholic Church is trying to speak that about more and more. But it's paramount in our lives. We need to accept Christ in our life. We really need to do that. And as we do that, that we, like what Father Dennis is saying, then all these things that we talk about We'll be, we'll be able to talk about it from experience and from faith. I'm going to call back uh, Marty Nogo, who is our state cultural diversity chairman, to inform us about the diversity within our province. Again, good evening to all of you. First, I want to remind you all that the uh, under cultural diversity committee we have already two coordinators <coughs> that i introduced before in district deputies meeting from yorktown's brother jonathan rosas 
Member of Executive of Council 2031, St. Gerard. And uh, the other one is from Saskatoon. Brother Clint Elimanco, Council Peak Director of San Lorenzo Ruiz, 11429. These two brother knights will serve as coordinators and uh, will help to promote the Catholic faith and promote cultural diversity in our jurisdiction. Their names, emails, and contact numbers are in the state roster under cultural diversity. Basically, our work in cultural diversity is to become the bridge to other culture in every parish and in every church and council that needs to grow. We can help leverage uh, this following strategy, like number one, we can be part of casting vision for growth. Second, we can create a, a relational culture to the Catholic immigrants attending the church. Third, we can get the word out however we can. Door to door, to friends and family, and do simple Facebook invites, ads for them. And last, we can be a role model for others. But in order to do what I said, we always need external support so we can paint the whole picture. We need support from any council who wants to grow or else we will rely only on prayers and relationship. And without programs, we will lose them eventually. Planting good deed is a work of a lifetime. We need to plant seeds every second every hour and every day. <clears throat> now, if we want to grow, we need to take away our fear. We need to break the pattern of negativity under this pandemic, and we need to face anything negative with love. Let's begin to work in solidarity. This is the word I used in my last report in district deputy meeting last December. And I will add this to my report tonight about how important is solidarity in this time of pandemic. Humanity's inclination to be kind during this coronavirus pandemic crisis is unprecedented. We, the Knights, need to show an uplifting demonstration of solidarity. Solidarity has also been a central concept in Catholic social teaching since the end of 19th century. It's figure prominently in liberation theology in which solidarity and communion with the four is a fundamental spiritual commitment. As a knight, it is our moral duty to work together for the benefits of all. I choose the word solidarity to remind all of us in our second principle of unity that we are bound together, whether we came from different races. We need to help each other's needs. We are the, we, whether we are confronting a pandemic, global warming, natural disaster, income inequality, racism or gender-based violence, solidarity depends on how we come together. It is defined by how we understand and enact our responsibilities and duties as a knight and to our relationship with each other. We need to ignore the differences and potential conflict between the needs and values of different groups of people around us. We need to encourage more men to join our order, and this is one of our missions. But how can we do that if we show nothing or if we project something but we give nothing? if we are not together. One essence of solidarity is that we don't necessarily have a personal relationship with those on whose behalf we take action. The truth is 
we as a knight. We have a strong sense of solidarity because we belong to a religious group that rely on our Catholic faith over science to protect ourselves. We need a strong sense of social solidarity to promote our order's agenda and values. Whatever form we invoke, it is helpful to remember these three aspects of solidarity that I will share to all of you tonight. First is solidarity is always about relationship. We cannot be in solidarity alone. Who are we in solidarity with and what define that relationship? In solidarity, we are leaders and we need to build bridges to others so those people who will walk on that bridge surely will follow us. Second, solidarity always requires us to be intentional about our commitments. What is the aim of our solidarity and where do those commitments come from? In our order, we help people in need and we cannot afford to stop our mission. Whoever they are, we need to commit it from our heart. And the third one, Solidarity requires action that also changes us, perhaps even a sacrifice. Sacrifice is the best projection of, a, of an action of solidarity to attract sympathy of all men. I will leave this question to all of you, for, your, for each of us. What I am willing to do and give up in order to ensure the well-being of others whether they are like or unlike me. And uh, I will announce again for my extra note that the, the Philippines will be celebrating 500 years of Christianity starting April 17, 2021. This is a very significant event for all Filipino Catholics. As you all know that the Filipinos are, in the, are the fastest growing immigrants here in the province of Saskatchewan. I encourage all council to create a program as soon as possible that will appreciate all Filipino member in each council prior to this celebration, a program that will appreciate them to bring their friends to join in our order. This is the good time to take advantage of this celebration because this is a great history for all Filipino Catholics. As a knight, we need to always look at others' eyes. We need to always listen to others' ears. And we need to always feel others' hearts. Be but Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Marty. It's been a pleasure for me to work with Marty for the last four or five years because Marty has brought me into places where I've never been before. So thank you, Marty, for doing that. One of the things that the Knights of Columbus have been doing here in Saskatoon is working a lot with Queen's House. Uh, Brendan Bitts, who is, uh, who is the coordinator of Queen's House here, has been really receptive to the Knights of Columbus and has given us room to do a lot of the work of the Knights. We've also been talking about the spiritual enrichment weekend and I'm going to give you the date for that spiritual enrichment weekend. It's going to be held here in Saskatoon. The date is March the 13th. It's a Saturday. The spiritual enrichment weekend will be that Saturday, and it will be done over a Zoom. And the reason I've asked um, Brendan to talk about that, because Queen's House has done a lot of different programs here using this platform. And I'm going to ask Brendan to open our eyes on that. Thanks, Adrian, um, Father Dennis, and all Brother Knights. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you for this tonight. Um, I'm not going to dwell on um, the, the details so much, but a little bit of an overview that uh, I think might be helpful. Um, for us, having to move in the way that we all have had to in this virtual world, uh, is the situation that occurred when um, opportunity and necessity collided. And it's hard to believe that it's coming up to a year, but 
we would say that for us at Queen's House, the COVID sparked um, the pace of transition rather than the direction of transition uh, to this work, because we were, we were starting to move down this path um, for some time. And it falls into three general categories. One is all of the work around software tools. Um, so for us, um, you know, software is what makes the, um, a, a lot of this hardware uh, function and um, uh, coordinate itself and, and work together. We use it for organization management, tracking and accounting, for communication and promotion, uh, for online and virtual promotion, registration and payment, and the utility systems to support our range of activities. And one of these um, have been, of course, Zoom that we're using tonight. Uh, Teams, Microsoft Teams has been very helpful. Uh, Dropbox, a uh, number of these um, uh, that are uh, utilities that are out there that are uh, proving their worth for sure. Hardware is really important and um, I don't have a, I, I wish I could just flash a quick picture of what Glenn has, has set up and what we use um, here at Queen's House ourselves uh, for some of this work. Um, just ensuring that uh, computers and servers are up to date, um, that we've been working in partnership with um, um, uh, a number of uh, groups so that we can access um, a lot of this um, important infrastructure at either no cost or very limited cost. And so we're very grateful for that. Um, installation of fiber optics to Queen's House in June, it was a big um, asset and it sure increased our capacity. And this we know will be work that is gonna be, um, it's gonna remain in progress. Um, I'll take this opportunity, a bit of a paid political announcement, announcement if you wish, to express our appreciation to Glenn Hauser for his excellent, excellent support and guidance for us. Uh, Glenn joined us in April and has just been a godsend uh, for uh, a lot of this work. Um, so we're very grateful. There's a third component with all of this and we refer to it as warm wear. And that's the human touch. Um, capacity and competence of staff is very, very important and of people. Um, and we certainly see that in Glenn. Um, integration of these uh, innovations is the key strategy. And you can have the best tools, but if you haven't got, you know, people who can use them effectively, they're of little use to you. Um, training at all levels has paid dividends. And we poured a lot of time and energy into our community, um, helping to train them on Zoom um, so that they could begin to access many, many of the uh, online programs that we're offering right now. Um, and often what we find is technology changes, uh, tends to change rather than reduce workload. And we certainly found that to, to be true here. Some of our special in, uh, innovations include virtual presentations and gatherings for retreats, workshops, presentations, and meetings, as we're in the middle of one right now. Uh, adapting to hybrid options, which is both virtual and person, which we're doing right now. And that's becoming to be more of a common norm um, for us as groups are, are asking our support and our assistance. Um, we have been able to integrate things that have assisted our programming, uh, online auction options as in fundraising components. And it's interesting because not only are we working with the Knights of Columbus on the spiritual enrichment weekend, but also we're working with the Support for Life fundraiser, um, which will be uh, scheduled now for March 25th. And it'll be an online program and auction and there will be information surfacing around that. But we're just so pleased to have the Knights as what we call our, our real important partners uh, with our work here at Queen's House. Um, we also have the ability to record and then rebroadcast our, our uh, presentations. And it helps with people uh, who are maybe not able to take in live events or in actual time, real time, 
but can access it afterwards for their benefit, which is really good. One of the other things that we're working on and trying to predict and understand is the post pandemic challenges, sort of the, the where to from here. When do things settle out? What will recovery look like? Knowing uh, what we have learned um, at this time is really, really important. We have to know it and name it. And we are committed to being of service to our church, to a service to our community. And in doing that, to maintain our own health so that we can be of service to others. As we all know, nobody goes to see a sick doctor and we wanna, we wanna maintain that. And one of the lines that we've come up with recently has been, we don't wanna be just be the light at the end of the tunnel. We wanna be the light within the tunnel. And that's what a lot of people are looking for and seeking because this is really um, taking its toll on people's sense of, of balance and welfare and, and so on. And um, we're, we're ha happy to be uh, doing that work, like I say, on behalf of the church and, um, and the community. And it's sure good to do it within partnerships with the Knights. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you, Brendan. Like I said, Brendan has been a real strong partner with the Knights of Columbus, and we certainly appreciate coming here. And uh, he's given us open arms, and God bless you for doing that. I know Brendan's got to leave here, so. Uh, Thank you for staying around. Thank you for allowing us to come here and God bless you. Thank you very much. We're gonna switch the gears here a little bit and we're gonna go into some of the programs that are really important to the Knights of Columbus. And I've asked Blair Crothers to give us a synopsis about what's happening with the insurance agencies. So there's tremendous work. And just so you know, Blair Crothers, um, this year in his endeavor as a salesman, is 37th in the order in sales. He sold over $2 million worth of insurance. And I, I could be wrong, but it's, it's in that area. And so uh, Blair has done a tremendous, tremendous job within the Knights. And uh, I know Mark Lewins is really proud of him. And so are we. He's also our agent for our Lady of Lords. So Blair. Well, good evening. Thank you, Brother Adrian. And thank you, uh, Brendan and Queen's House. Uh, Jennifer and I spent uh, a fair amount of time with the Lay Formation Program here at Queen's House. And when I walked back into uh, the front doors, it was like coming home. It's such a great venue that we have here in our city. And I just, I love the fact that the Knights of Columbus uh, are, are utilizing partnerships with Queen's House. Um, worthy State Deputy, uh, Reverend Father Dennis, and Brother Knights. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Adrian. Uh, a little bit uh, embarrassing, but um, I'll, I'll talk a bit about some of our success a little bit later. I'm just going to spend a few moments because I wanted to talk about three things. I wanted to talk about why. I wanted to talk about what, and I want to talk about where. So why? Why am I a field agent with the Knights of Columbus? Uh, coming up in the next uh, month or so, it'll be four years. And my background uh, involved banking, finance, uh, economics, uh, business. And when Mark Lewins, our general agent, uh, approached me, uh, I wasn't sure if this was the type of a career path that I wanted. Uh, I discerned over it and decided based on my background that I would definitely give it a go. Uh, Mark Lewins, who has uh, uh, nearly 25 years experience in this industry as our general agent and our leader, and I bring greetings from him as uh, with the rest of our agents across Saskatchewan, all 10 of us. But I gave it a go. And I understood uh, when I went to my first training session in New Haven, Connecticut, that it was going to be both ministry and mission. And then I discovered they were one and the same. So yes, as a field agent, we look after uh, insurance and investment products. But when I was in New Haven, and this is the why, 
When I was in New Haven, we took a week long of training. At the end of the training, we went to St. Mary's Cathedral. Uh, if any of you have been there, it's, it's beautiful. And in St. Mary's Cathedral, in front of a full mass, us agents that were there for training were missioned. We were commissioned to be field agents within the Knights of Columbus. And I know of no other organization or financial service company that actually celebrates mass and, and commissions their agents to go forward uh, as Catholic men and provide the Knights of Columbus and their families the financial protection and services that they require. The part that really struck me was the fact when you enter St. Mary's Church on the left-hand side is a granite sarcophagus. And in that is the body of the blessed Michael McGivney. And I just, I get chills when I think about that even to this moment, because that is just amazing that our founder in 1882, who had the vision of what the Knights of Columbus would be and become over the uh, 135 some years in its existence, that our founder who is now on his pathway to sainthood is right there. And I was able to reach out with my hand and place it on the granite sarcophagus as I prayed. So that is the why. Uh, that is what gets me up every day, reaches out to clients and, and do the things that I do. What is it that I do? Well, actually I'll give you just a quick synopsis. When I first started uh, with the Knights, I was only a couple months in and one of my very first uh, things that I had to do was a death claim. And I got a call from brother uh, Marvin DeShriver, most of you know Marvin, and he may be even on this call, uh, this, this Zoom. But I had to go do a death claim for an 11-year-old boy out in Denzel. Okay, it was a farm accident. And I turned to my wife when I got the call, and I said, my wife's a nurse, and I said, what am I, how am I going to do this? And she said, you just have to take the Holy Spirit with you. You just have to. And I did. And, you know, you go out there and there's paperwork that has to be completed. That took 20 minutes, but I spent three and a half hours with that family because I wanted to know about the young boy. I wanted to know who his favorite hockey team was. And it's, it was, it's the Edmonton Oilers, by the way. And it really, at that moment, it struck me that we're doing this not just because it's a job or a career. It's because it's our mission and our ministry. And it's all in the same. And that's why we do it. Another thing that happened to me just before Christmas is one of our brother knights here in Saskatoon, uh, who I know fairly well, uh, has a, uh, a severely physically challenged son. And they had to fly to Montreal, to Montreal Children's Hospital, in order to have uh, surgery performed. And I was texting this individual and, and he was telling me they were in Montreal, they were in a hotel, they were gonna be there for a couple of weeks. And I felt like I was removed. I felt like I wanted to do something, but I'm in Saskatoon, his family's in Montreal. I phoned one of my brother field agents in Montreal and he reached out to him. He phoned the family and he says, Blair got in touch with me. He told me you're here. If there's anything you need, if you need me to pick you up or take you somewhere or pick you something up or, and, and when that individual and his family got home, he phoned me and he said, just thank you for that just to know that it doesn't matter where we are in this community, in this country, or on this planet. There's Knights of Columbus all over, and we just have to reach out and truly be, you know, be uh, appreciative of our brethren and of our fraternal characteristics, okay? Where? Where do we, where do, we do? Where, where do we do what I do? Well, we know what the fraternal uh, guys do, so many things, and, uh, and I'm really appreciative of that. But in my role, things really had to change in 2020. We started the year uh, with high expectations. COVID hit, it hit all of us. We had to adapt. Uh, our Supreme Office uh, was there to the task. They equipped us agents with all the technology, hardware, software, like Brendan alluded to, to enable us to be able to do our job. We were able to Zoom, Skype. Uh, we were able to do a lot of our financial and insurance business via the internet, electronic signing. Uh, and and um, we really prepared ourselves for a less than spectacular year. 
Well, I'm here tonight uh, on behalf of Mark Lewins and, and the 10 agents in Saskatchewan uh, that uh, to announce that Knights of Columbus uh, Financial, the insurance agency, uh, exceeded 2019 numbers. Not only were we expecting to be lower than what we did the year before, we actually exceeded it. And it was just due to the some 1,000 agents across uh, United States, Canada, and Puerto Rico. So there's approximately 1,000 agents out there. Thank you, Adrian. Yes, I was 37. Uh, it wasn't 2 million, it was 20 million, but uh, that's fine. Um, <laughs> In today's terms, it's not a lot, but I, I, I love what I do. I really love what I do. And, um, but the one thing I wanted to point out, um, and, and not about me, about our agency, we've got a great group of guys. Um, there, like I said, there's a thousand agents. There's roughly a hundred agencies uh, in the order. And out of a hundred agencies, Saskatchewan finished number three in the order. But more importantly, we finished number one in Canada. So Saskatchewan, and that's thanks to you guys. Uh, so, and those of you that have joined in via Zoom, thank you to all of those who participate in our program. On a closing note, I just, and I usually do this when I have an opportunity, I just like to explain the difference between an associate member and an insured member, okay? Now, an associate member is someone that joins the order and you're, you're a full member of the Knights of Columbus and we welcome you uh, with open arms. It's when you take part uh, in the optional insurance side. And if you give the agents in your area an opportunity just to talk to you, you'll discover that the Knights of Columbus Financial has some of the top notch products in the industry. The financial services industry is a very highly regulated industry. Uh, twice a year, it is analyzed by two organizations called uh, AM Best and um, Standards and Poor. And these two companies, uh, organizations look at all the financial companies and they rank them. Knights of Columbus in North America was ranked the top financial services industry in North America. Okay, It's based on our ethical and our integrity. It's based on our balance sheet. Uh, it's based on all the things that we take uh, quite seriously and, and, and quite dearly, okay? So with that, um, but here's the caveat. When I look at the number of members we have, approximately 2 million members, only one third, less than 30% of our members are insured members. That means two thirds of our membership are not participating in the program. And my question is, why? So here's my little commercial to those of you that are members of the Knights of Columbus. If you're insured members and you're really happy with your agent, give them a call and just say thank you uh, for all the efforts that they do. They're doing a great job and especially my brothers here in Saskatchewan. If you're not an insured member, find a way maybe just to have a coffee or a conversation or a telephone call or a Zoom call uh, with an agent just to get brought up to speed they can look at maybe some of the things you have with other companies, they can give you advice, uh, and if everything is fine, uh, they'll agree with that. With that, uh, I, I wanna thank you again, Brother Knights, for letting me be here, and um, you know, keep up uh, all the work that you do. And um, one thing, a comment to Marty, uh, the agency has set goals for recruitment, so we are going out as field agents and we're actively recruiting and when I recruit, I seek out young Catholic families because I sit down with them and I help them do uh, financial planning based on a model of faith, family, fitness, and finance. And we target those four areas. And when I sit down with a family, both the husband and wife, and we start looking at this, uh, quite often the response they give me is they say, we never knew that the Knights of Columbus even did this. So it's a great way for us to get engaged with uh, young Catholic families. Uh, and usually through that process, I encourage them to sign up via e-membership uh, just to get them into the order. And then of course, um, to seek out their local council and, and get into a local council and start getting active. So thank you again, gentlemen. Uh, I am blessed and humbled. Uh, and I look forward to, to uh, working with you as we go into the future and into 2021. Thank you very much.
one of the things about the agency, uh, the way Blair was talking, I think the agency has recruited probably 35 or 40% of the new recruits that we've had this year. So the agency with Mark at, their, at the helm is really encouraging the agents to, to exactly what Blair was talking about. And talking about membership, we talk about online membership, we talk about every kind of membership. I'm gonna ask Abel Desaw to come in on Zoom and tell us a little bit about membership. Abel. Thank you, Brother Adrian, um, Brother Dennis, um, our State Deputy Joe, State Board, and all you members that are with us today. Um, thank you for coming out. Well, what can I say about online membership? I'm going to be honest with you. When they first implemented this a number of years ago, I thought it was ridiculous. I didn't think it would work. I didn't think it was something that would really come to anything since then and i don't know if it was poetic justice or what happened but since i got this uh, portfolio man did that change my mind online membership is a great tool to get new members into our order since it's been implemented we've had hundreds and hundreds of men that have used the program to join in saskatchewan this is an easy way to recruit all council should be promoting the program in their community. In these pandemic times, most parishes have gone to online masses, bulletins and advertisements. So you can ask your chaplain if you can use these formats to get your message out to your fellow parishioners. Social media is a great way to get your community involved. And we've heard that from a number of people already that have spoken this evening. Brother or Brendan mentioned, he says, why aren't we not using the tools that we have on hand? Well, that's our tools that we have on hand. Brother Marty mentioned, he says, we should show that men want to join us on their own. And that's misquoting them, but we already have that with the online membership. We have had hundreds and hundreds of men in Saskatchewan that have joined online. But one of the problems we've had is these men are just sitting there. I pulled up some numbers today, and as of today, we have 167 members that are sitting in the online category. 167 that have been allocated to councils. These are members that have already shown initiative that they want to join our order or they wouldn't have taken that step. It's up to the council to bring that member into the, their council. Between Dan, our membership director, and he is online with us tonight too. We can ask him any questions you need to do. He and I have taken all those 167 members and allocated them to each council that they are, they should be involved in. Now, <laughs> I have pulled the numbers for Saskatoon because of this is being mostly concentrated in Saskatoon. I do have the numbers here for all of Saskatchewan, but, um, Saskatoon alone has 69 members, plus one in Warman, so 70 members that the councils have not yet outreached out to. Now, granted, some of these members are not going to join the council, and we're okay with that. Every member that joins, joins for a different reason. But until the council contacts this member, you're not going to know if he's one of those. There, every one of these members should be contacted by the council in order to get them active into the council. Now, having said that, um, sorry, where was I going to go with that? The, uh, every one of these members should be contacted. Now, all this information, of course, can be pulled up by every financial secretary, every grand knight, every I believe every membership director from the council. 
can pull up their information on each individual council. Every council that Dan and I have implemented a member to has gotten an email from us telling them that there is a member sitting there in limbo for it. So all these members that are, uh, or all these council that are saying, how do we recruit? How do we recruit? How do we recruit? There's 176, sorry, 167 members sitting there right now that already, they're ready to come into our councils. All we have to do is contact them and finish the process. Um, some of the, uh, one of the questions that was asked earlier in one of the emails, I'm not sure which one it came from, is how come BC, Alberta, Manitoba are doing so much more, how they're doing well as opposed to Saskatchewan. And we were involved in a meeting not too long ago, uh, our state deputy and myself and a couple members from other provinces. And what I got out of it is they are really, really pushing social media. They are advertising from the councils. They are, they are using the tools that they have on hand. So if we can do the same, I mean, every parish, like it's amazing how many parishes I'm getting a, a notification now that their masses are being streamed online. Their, their bulletins are being streamed online. As Knights of Columbus, we can easily tie into those. I know our council is one of the ones that have been doing it for quite some time. All of our notifications are going out through the bulletin through, and that goes to all the parishioners, not just your Knights of Columbus, but it goes to all the parishioners. So I um, think that's all I have to say on that. I don't know if there's any questions. Um, there again, uh, the only thing I would, I would like to push is the DDs, please see that your councils are looking into membership, member, mem member management and going into that and finding your prospects that are sitting there. And that way it, it, it brings in your members. There's an, there are some councils in Saskatoon that have 10 members sitting there. Um, so yeah, that's, if there's any questions, I'll gladly take them. Uh, Brother Dan is, uh, is online. I don't know if he has anything he can add to that. Uh, no, uh, I'm good. A good job, Abel, very good. Uh, I just wanted to say that the uh, financial secretary and the Grand Knight are the only members that have access on members online that can uh, actually move members into their council. So the financial, the uh, member director, membership director does not have access to that site. They can't see it at all, not, not to do anything, but just to see? You know, I'm not sure because I don't have that access. I believe it's only the financial secretary and Grand Knight. Joe is saying no. <laughs> no, he's telling me not to say anything else. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that was for me. <laughs> but no, uh, gentlemen, membership is very key and yet, uh, we put these members into members online into councils in September. These members have been sitting there longer than that, some of them for two years. Um, I did, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Dan. I did pull that number off. Uh, what, the oldest mo current member that's on that list is from September 2019. Okay. So he has been sitting there um yeah for a year and a half now um waiting for a call i guess from our council um so yeah um that's all i got to say use the tools promote the bejesus out of it uh as brother joe said earlier they got another uh six months extension for their free membership um that's all I have. Is there any questions? Having none, I will turn it back to you, Brother Adrian. Thank you, Abel. Thank you for joining us online. One of the things that's happened this year is uh, Pope Francis has dedicated 
this year to St. Joseph. And so Sean from Council um, 10587 is gonna give us a brief explanation of this whole consecration to St. Joseph. Okay, can everyone hear me from home? Thank you, uh, Brother Adrian, uh, worthy State Deputy Joseph, Father Phaneuf, uh, worthy Grand Knights and Brother Knights present. Um, uh, it's an honor for me to be uh, here to, to be speaking with you today. Um, uh, as Brother Adrian mentioned, uh, on December 8th, Pope Francis uh, had announced this uh, coming year as being uh, dedicated to, to our uh, St. Joseph. And uh, St. Joseph being a, a patron saint of mine, um, it just seemed to ha just be perfect. Um, uh, just a month prior, I had uh, consecrated my life to St. Joseph. And uh, I did so by way of a program that I learned about uh, the summertime. Um, it's, a, it's a 33 day devotional um, that's, uh, that can be run individually or in a group setting. And uh, so when, uh, when Pope Francis announced that, I think we had a, a council meeting the day following. And uh, I said, that's it. Uh, I have to announce this. I want to lead a group uh, of Brother Knights. Uh, and, and heck, I'll even lead some my parish um, in, in consecrating their life in, in this program that will uh, have one consecrate their life to St. Joseph. So maybe if I can just share you a little bit uh, on the screen there, you can see the cover of the book, uh, which, which um, guides those participating through, um, through this 33-day uh, program. Um, on the back of the book, it reads, um, it reads from Luke 9, 48. Uh, he that is the lesser among you, he is the greater. His Eminence Raymond Leo Cardinal Burke says, in the most troubling situation in which the church finds herself today, the fatherly protection of St. Joseph, first exercised in the Holy Family, then in the universal church is needed now more than ever. Drawing upon, upon the long tradition of devotion to St. Joseph, Father Calloway invites us to consecrate ourselves to the heroically pure and just St. Joseph. Consecration to St. Joseph is a rich handbook by which to come to know the wonders of the life and vocation of St. Joseph. To grow in devoted love of him and thus to invoke daily his protection for the church. Most Reverend Athanasius Schneider goes on to say that in the consecration of St. Joseph, Father Calloway has given us, the church, a precious gift. St. Joseph is the patron of the church and the terror of demons. Our spiritual father will teach us to place God above all things, strive for the purity of heart, maintain a profound interior life, and have boundless confidence in unchanging truth. Now is the time for individuals, families, parishes, and dioceses to consecrate themselves to the spiritual father of, of St. Francis. So uh, with that said, I offered to my council uh, that night um, uh, my willingness to lead a group of whoever wanted to participate in this 33-day uh, consecration. Uh, a couple of things about the consecration. Um, uh, it involves, and, and it's recommended that the book itself be purchased. Um, there's a local store here. I think I quoted it on Amazon. Uh, about $20, $22 is, is what the book costs. Uh, but in this book, it's just filled with so much that I had no idea existed about St. Joseph. Um, so much of um, details being a cradle Catholic and a born raised a Catholic. I've always known to be in love of uh, St. Joseph, but so much more. It's really enriched my knowledge and understanding of, of St. Joseph and what he means to our church 
and to our lives daily. Um, so I offered to my council that I would lead a group um, starting February 15th. Um, it's 33 days and February 15th being the starting day just so happens to then end on March 19th, which is the feast day of St. Joseph, uh, which in fact would be the consecration day. So um, Father Calloway has eight specific terms within a year to which you can start. They typically like to start on a, uh, an important day, a feast day and end primarily on a feast day devoted to uh, or recognizing St. Joseph. So I did my consecration back in, in, uh, in September and um, I was able to uh, have, do that and share that with my son and, and another good friend of mine. Uh, I found it extremely rewarding and I'm just so happy to have St. Joseph part of my daily life. So in doing so and in sharing that and inviting uh, council members to, uh, to join me, uh, I got an email from Glenn saying that uh, this might be something worth opening up to, uh, to the city. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's a great idea. Uh, very humbling to think that the idea can be presented in that way. But I, I just think we all need St. Joseph today um, as part of the head of the family um, and to strengthen our families and so forth. So um, that, that's what I have in play. Um, some might ask, um, okay, what does this involve? Is this a huge time commitment? Because just like everything today, um, lives are busy, although COVID has, has definitely changed a lot of lives. Um, what I can say about the 33 days that are, are, are day to day for 33 state days is that it, it all that requires is about 20 minutes a day. Um, in the 20 minutes, it's all led individually. You do it on your own time in parts of the day, whenever you have time. The book does an amazing job just outlining what to do, uh, which basically involves three parts. One, there's a short exposition on one of the invocations of the powerful litany of St. Joseph, followed by a reading on St. Joseph from the multitude of saints who have written about St. Joseph. And it ends with the rest, um, uh, uh, recitation of the litany of St. Joseph. So that is just all that is expected daily is to follow the program in the book, uh, read on your own time. For groups, they recommended that there'd be a leader um, appointed to lead a whole series of questions which are in the book. Um, and in it, I have actually scheduled down um, six meetings to which it's meant to have fellowship and uh, and to see and, and, and involve group participation in a way that everyone can share uh, how the program is going and basically discuss parts of the readings from that week and, and, and what, uh, what has happened in people's lives. So I'm really excited uh, to, to, to get into it and uh, to start it. Um, now to do it, I can, being someone who's dealt with groups a lot in my, in my uh, professional life, I find it easy to do in person. Zoom is a little different, um, but it's something that uh, we'll see how it goes because obviously we have limitations in terms of getting together. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's about all that's involved. So any questions? Okay. Thank you. For your time. One of the questions I have is, can we, uh, are you going to send out your email address or something so that uh, we can get in touch with you so that we can, if we want to ask more questions, we can do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have a, um, a, an email that I'd sent out to my brothers in my council that uh, set the dates linked up where you can purchase the book talked about just what I explained to everyone here today, along with clicked it to a YouTube, a six minute YouTube video uh, where uh, Dr. Scott Hahn 
interviews Father Callaway six minutes. And after you watch that, uh, you get pretty excited about uh, doing this to learn more of our uh, of our St. Joseph. So, uh, yes, I can show that uh, Glenn actually, oh, I see there, Glenn's scrolling through it right now. So I can make that available. Uh, Glenn, I don't know if you want to or have the means to flip it to everyone to feel free to, uh, to, uh, to sign up. And uh, when the list is together, then we can, we can run it. Excellent. So we can put that in the comment paper. We can put that, uh, give it to, uh, to the leadership of the state. We can push that right across the province. Absolutely. Okay, excellent. It's kind of coincidental that the 33 day program, Jesus was 33 when he died. So uh, uh, please take advantage of this, brothers. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna switch gears here again, and basically I'm gonna call the district deputies, and I'm gonna ask them to. We're gonna get a little specific here about what's happening within the district. So I'm gonna call uh, Brother Frank Brown from District 28 to talk about what he wants to talk about. Greetings, brothers. I will be talking about, I have two topics to talk about tonight, succession planning and awards. Succession planning is needed to ensure that your council operates in an efficient manner. At this time of the year, we should start to plan for officers and program chairs for 2021-22 fraternal year. This would give the members an insight into the council operation by mentoring brothers to serve in leadership roles and avoid the last minute scrambling to fill positions. It is the time of the year to appoint a nominating committee. Also, many of our financial secretaries have been in their positions for many years and would like a change. This is a supreme appointment, but they would like to have somebody to mentor as a potential replacement. Succession planning is an opportunity to educate our brother Knights and ensure involvement in the council. Awards. Have you said thank you to your members who have helped your council, especially this year during the pandemic. Supreme has many certificates available, such as the certificate of merit or certificate of appreciation. These can be found in offices online in the section of supplies and you dig down into administrative supplies and dig further, and there's about 10 pages of certificates available. Brother Adrian and I have done it. Have you recognized your brothers for the years of service? After five years, 10 years, 15, 25, 50, and so forth. You know, people, don't really aren't looking for it, but it's a great retention tool and gain involvement back in your council. Has your council participate in the Knights of the Year program, Family of the Year program, Family of the Month? Have you recognized your retiring officers, especially the Grand Knight? Each one of us will say, we're not members who want to receive recognition. However, we appreciate it when it happens. Uh, only recently in the mail, I received a 30 year certificate for Scouts Canada. You know, it's something small, but you, and you're not expecting it, but it makes you feel good. Make sure you use the Supreme website, kfc.org, and especially for members. There's a whole new section in there. If you dig through it, you find all kinds of things. There's an eight minute video that'll explain what you'll find. Uh, 
all the forms are now there as well for council, state, uh, assemblies, everybody's forms are there. Also, look at the kfcsas.com. There's a lot of local information. In fact, today on Facebook through that site, you saw Blair's picture. Uh, you know, so let's make use of these sites and keep our members in mind. It serves as a great retention tool. Keep up the good work, be safe, and leave no neighbor behind. Thank you, Brother Frank. Frank phones me at least once a week to fill me up on uh, what's happening online and all this kind of stuff. So uh, I appreciate his phone calls. He is always taking up new stuff. And so he's always letting me know what's going on. Plus, uh, not only that, but he emails his Grand Knights and financial secretaries. He always CCs all the other the district deputies as well. I'm just gonna give you a little hint here for Grand Knights and financial secretaries. On, on the portal for kfc.org, you can actually send an email to all your Knights on your council list. So if, like Frank is saying, if you wanna send greetings from the Grand Knight or from the financial secretary, that can be done from the website kfc.org. Just go to emails there, and anybody on your, on, your, on your portal in your council that has an email will receive that. I've done that numerous times where I sent all the guys in my council an email wishing them a Merry Christmas or whatever. So it's another tool to use when we're communicating with all our brothers in the nights. Yeah, there is also a training video on that section that Frank is talking about. So. Um, and especially exactly what uh, what uh, Brendan Biss was talking about. Let's use that virtual stuff that's available to us. Yeah, I mean we got to learn some stuff, but what the heck, eh? Let's all let's all be in the same picture. I'm going to call upon our worthy uh, district deputy Ron Denis to talk about what he wants to talk about. Thank you, Adrian. Worthy Brother Knights, Father Dennis, uh, worthy state deputy, he's still online, uh, fellow worthy district deputies, and uh, congratulations, uh, insurance agent Blair. Um, Blair's not my, my insurance agent for our council or anything like that, but uh, when I saw his picture on, on Facebook, I think it was Sunday morning or this weekend, maybe, I uh, sure was excited to see that. Congratulations again, Blair. Um, I'm gonna to talk tonight about uh, Leave No Neighbor Behind. Now, this has been a program that's been around since, uh, I think, uh, July, maybe before July, uh, July started. Anyway, it's uh, a program that is vitally important uh, in these times, in these tough times. Um, but what does it really mean? What does Leave, leave No Neighbor Behind? I'll tell you means quite a few things. Not only does this mean uh, to communicate with, uh, with a, a brother that you, you don't see very often, and these times, these tough times, uh, you don't see hardly anybody at church anymore. You, you can't really, you're not supposed to socialize after church and stuff like that. So it, it, it's really, really tough, but you've got to, uh, you've got to keep in mind of, of your fellow brothers from your council, especially that, that the ones that you don't, see or hear from, um, kind of like little hermits, you gotta grab that phone list and, and give them a shout. That's probably the most important thing about Leave No Neighbor Behind, one of the most important things. Um, we've lost the ability of identifying or, or, or helping the vulnerable. As Father Dennis had mentioned earlier on, uh, in this virus, uh, it attacks everyone quite differently, and it affects each person 
very differently too. And, and I want to mention, uh, you know, speaking of, of Father Dennis and, and the rest of our parish priests, uh, when I'm talking about leave no neighbor behind, I think they should be the ones uh, that are right at the top of our list. Because if anybody's got probably one of the toughest jobs right now are uh, our, our, our parish priests and our bishop too. Uh, man, oh man, this, this is not easy. Anyway, just keep our brother priests definitely in mind. It also means to reach out to those most unfortunate, those that need to reach out to uh, food banks uh, or the Friendship Inn, or there's another one, uh, the Bridge on 20th. There's many organizations in this city that uh, need our help. Now, I've reached out uh, to my homework here with a number of them. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth here. I spoke uh, with Bob Wyma at the Friendship Inn. They could use our help. He, uh, I called him up on, a, I'll say a Wednesday or Thursday, and he says, yeah, he says, uh, I told him what we're gonna be doing on Monday night. We're gonna, a bunch of us nights are getting together and we're gonna be talking about the little different problems we are encountering in our in our councils, in our parishes and in our city. And so he did get back to me and he says, yep, he certainly could use three or four bodies, men that are COVID friendly because in these COVID times, these beautiful colored masks, some are white and some are red and some are black and they gotta be worn all the time when you're going out. So that's one of the main things you must bring along when you go to, uh, to the Friendship Inn to do some volunteering. He said that he needs at least four bodies in the next few days to the next couple of weeks. It's uh, organizing, uh, let's see, what did he say? Organizing and sorting and structuring the inventory that they've got there at the, uh, the Friendship Inn. Uh, it'd be a maximum of four to six hours uh, for that job. So I will say or if there are any brother knights that want to uh, volunteer, either call Bob uh, down. Now I can, you know, I mean, I should have started off by apologizing for not sending you um, my uh, itinerary, what I'm going to talk about. I thought of it only about today and uh, that's as far as I got. So I've got it all written here and I see uh, Frank had it all organized for his. I'm sure everybody else are more organized than, than I am anyway. Uh, so I'll say Bob's phone number is 306-242-5122 uh, at the Friendship Inn. Or if you want to call me, because he said he's going to be calling me later on this week just to see how I made out tonight. So if you want to find my number there in the, my phone number and my uh, email is in these little red books that we've got here. So just look me up, I'm easy to find. I spoke to Linda at the bridge on 20th Street. I don't know if everybody are aware of what the bridge on 20th Street is. The bridge on 20th is, um, I'll say it's similar to the Friendship Inn, but a little bit more, definitely more Protestant. Friendship Inn, um, I think was originally started or organized by the Catholics or by the Diocese of, of Saskatoon. Uh, the bridge on 20th uh, is definitely Christian. Uh, they are um, very prayerful people, I'll tell you. Uh, I talked to Linda, and uh, they've got a ministry going on at that, that, uh, that little building there on 20th Street. And they are just around the railroad tracks. If you know where, if you're going towards the Columbian Manor, Columbian Place, sorry, or towards St. Paul's Hospital from downtown, they are just before you cross the tracks. And she asked me, she says, have you heard what we've been doing here lately? Now I've been involved with the bridge on 20th street probably for three or four years, but to tell you the truth, way before the COVID started, I haven't been involved at all. So uh, she says, you're probably not aware, but before Christmas, we had a little campaign going on and they just purchased a lot, which would be about two doors down from where they are. It used to be a Ford Fairlane, uh, 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 selling cars. It's a small lot there right by the tracks. I think it's a property right, right next to the tracks. 
kind of on the east side of the railroad tracks there on 20th Street. They uh, found out that it was for sale and they, with uh, a lot of prayer, and uh, when I say prayer, they are faithful people. In 46 days, and they must have a hotline to heaven, I tell you. In 46 days, they raised $365,000 and they bought that property. So in the spring, they are going to be looking for skilled guys. Um, if you're looking for a job, they, 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 they probably can go down there. But if you, uh, if you want to do some volunteering before they start the construction, uh, Linda there at the bridge on 20th Street, and I don't have her phone number right here for whatever reason, but just stop by there, wear a mask, and uh, they will take all kinds of help. Uh, of course, nothing is going to be happening here in the next little while, but uh, I'll say come March, April, if you have nothing to do and you'd like to help some brother, some, uh, some good people, uh, call Linda up there on bridge on 20th. I called somebody else and that was the food bank. Uh, now, I personally have heard quite a few different things about the food bank to a point where they were shutting down this in, in the middle of this COVID or at the beginning of the COVID because it was so, um, well, it was so scary, it was so dangerous. They never really did shut down. They, they got lots of donations, uh, food and, and whatnot. Uh, at the moment, she said, we're, because of the, the restrictions, they are kind of staying low key with their volunteers. But she says that could change in two weeks. So if you have never volunteered at the food bank, um, keep your ears open here for at the, at the beginning of February and maybe go check them out. I've got a phone number for them, 306-664-6565. So there again, uh, please be a good neighbor and, and don't leave any neighbor behind. Meeting the people where they're at is probably the greatest challenge. Accepting them um, as they are and sharing God's unconditional love is the key. These are not easy times. There are many, many families that need our help. There are many elderly people that, uh, that need our help if, uh, we haven't had any snow here lately, but when it does snow and you have neighbors, even uh, on your block or, or close by, some, some elderly people that you know that may be having a hard time even shoveling their sidewalk, that is not only a good Christian thing to do, but I'll tell you, it's probably the best neighborly task you can do. And don't collect $20 when you do that. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, brothers. Um, Leave no neighbor behind. Thank you. I belong to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish, and one of the things that we did in our church is we have a food pantry. And so people are asked to donate food items, or if you don't want to do that, you can provide some, some funds, some monetary funds, and uh, you get a tax receipt for that. And so you can also claim that on the SP 1728, uh, which is uh, food for families. Uh, we call it the food pantry at Our Lady of Lourdes. And um, in fact, I just talked to Max here today. He's going to give me a report, but probably within the parish, we probably donated something like $5,000 worth of food that we give out to families. And we have a lot of refugees within our church. So a lot of that food is divvied out by the Knights and is given to um, refugees within our church. I'm gonna call upon our brother Dale Meyer here in District 26 to let us know what's cooking there. I guess I can take that off. <laughs> um, good evening, uh, uh, Father Dennis, uh, worthy state deputy, worthy program directors, uh, my uh, brother uh, district deputies, and of course, uh, Brother Knights. First of all, before I begin, I want to say this is meeting is really good. Brother Avian, 
thanks again, Brother Glenn. Uh, another super job. Uh, it's so very informative, like we're hitting so many topics. And uh, I think, I, I, I can't quite see, I think we've got over like 20 some participants on there. So this is fantastic. Brother Blair, congratulations again to yourself and the, uh, the agency. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, Brother Ian's my uh, insurance agent, and yeah, I just saw him not too long ago, so. Anyways, um, the topic that I want to talk about is, and it came out not too long ago, it's in regards to the uh, new guidelines for uh, general uh, council meetings, and I think uh, the intent of it is to kind of streamline where we're going with our council meetings. In a lot of cases, sometimes our meetings or can be a little little long. I'll, I'll, I'm going to digress a little bit from my uh, from what I've got written here and just give an example of when I first uh, joined the Knights back in the early '80s. I was oh, I was yeah, a little younger than now, and I remember going to a couple of council meetings. And, oh my gosh, it was like an old boys club, and it really turned. I just I didn't go for a lot of years. And then, you know what, uh, Brother Knight to my council called up uh, uh, older Brother Knight and said, you know, listen, uh, can you come out? Come on out, uh, you know, and um, we, we, we need you to come out. We need some help in that. And uh, uh, actually, I called up my uh, really close uh, friend, my brother, uh, Brother Ed Gibney. We we're both members of the Holy Spirit Council. And I said, uh, if uh, you come to this council meeting, I'll go. And so anyways, uh, he got more involved than I did right off the bat. Good for him. Anyways, I digress. Um, a purpose for the uh, guidelines is to ensure our meetings are kept to the point and not off track and to a maximum of an hour. It's to ensure our members' time is well spent I might not be totally on the uh, PowerPoint, so I'll kind of whenever. Thanks, Brother Glenn. <laughs> Council meetings should be combined with fraternal events like meals or social hours so that members can enjoy the wonderful camaraderie of their brothers, enjoy a meal or social hour, then get down to business, or conversely, get the work done and then socialize. The grad knight is uniquely responsible for the success or failure of council meetings. He should conduct them exactly as he would at work where any, and any effective meeting would reflect poorly upon his performance. A grad knight should use council meetings to share the council's vision, highlight success, explain the work at hand and call for votes on important issues. This is where he motivates members to participate in charitable activities and parish and community service. Councils are to hold an executive or planning meeting to go through all of the leg work, whatever needs to be brought to the general membership meeting beforehand. Everything, everything that I am bringing up here is contained in the new guidelines for council meetings booklet and it's found on the Supreme website. Uh, we had uh, sent it out prior to the, this meeting uh, with the, uh, the agenda and everything. So if uh, you still need it again, uh, just, just let me know. Put me an email or give me a call. I'm in the little red book too, or any of the district deputies and uh, we'll just flip it out to you. That's uh, what our virtual age is doing right now. So um, the PowerPoint here that we've got is also uh, on the site under resources as well. And I'm just gonna to touch on some of the highlights from the PowerPoint now. Um, what changed and what's new? Two meeting, monthly meetings are now required. That pretty much was the case before. A lot of councils were doing that. They were either having an executive uh, planning meeting beforehand, uh, maybe a week before or so, and then their general membership meeting. I know some councils like um, uh, my own council for a while was actually whole, they started with a, uh, uh, an executive meeting and then it kind of morphed into uh, 
you know, any council members uh, would want to attend that because they, they brought want to have more ideas that needed to be brought forward. So it actually became like two, two general uh, council meetings a month. So it kind of depends on wh where your council and where your brother knights are at. But two monthly meetings are, should be done. Um, new agendas and script were developed and guidelines and best practices were provided and key references were updated. And why were the changes made? Uh, it was to improve meeting experience and of course respect members time and implement uh, the 2018 updates to the CCL and add best practices. Of course, delete obsolete ones and promote virtual engagement practices. And it's a reflection of the survey responses of 55,000 members. Our worthy state deputy had uh, talked about that previously, that there was a survey done. Can't say that I ever saw that survey, but I'm sure it was done if it hit 55,000 members and uh, they're taking the major points from it. Uh, this was on, oh, have we got page eight on the PowerPoint? Yeah, uh, pardon me. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, oh, that's nine, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, this is eight. This was the uh, member feedback requested on uh, meeting agendas. And then if you go to uh, page nine of the PowerPoint, uh, this ranked the items. And uh, uh, red was not very good. So wasn't needed. Okay. <laughs> and, and I think our district deputies reports are in the red. <laughs> so, but I probably, <laughs> anyways. So, um, Supreme came up with a new agenda for council meetings, page 10. And uh, this, this is the, uh, the agenda uh, that they uh, put forward. And of course, if you go to the next page, page 11, there is the actual uh, guidelines for uh, council meetings and that's the booklet. The lot, guidelines lay out council meeting preparation uh, checklist, chamber setup, and elements of, of a successful meeting. And of course, it also gives pandemic considerations. Page 14 of the PowerPoint, there is an, an actual agenda uh, given out and script for the council meeting. So uh, that's very handy for the, uh, for the grand night. We presently have that now. This is just a, an update. Page 15 of the PowerPoint, here's the meat and potatoes of the meeting, actually conducting the meeting. The warden sets up the chamber. There should be techno a technology expert. Yeah, we're into this new age now, aren't we? Where we, we call on our technology uh, experts, uh, the, uh, the real young brother knights that uh, you know, can uh, really grasp this technology. And uh, I give a shout out uh, to several um, young brother knights. Uh, I know in my council, we've got one, two, three, whew, four of them or so. And uh, they're uh, doing the hybrid uh, council meetings for us, similar, comparable to this, where we'll have brothers uh, in present, in person, and uh, as well as uh, Zooming. And uh, like, it still kind of blows me away. Of course, well, what I'm doing here is pretty awesome. So, yeah, I, uh, I guess uh, like I'm, I'm one of the old boys, and, but uh, I'm trying to adapt. Uh, I kind of lost myself here. Um, yeah, of course, guards should welcome and sign in all attendees and only approved guests may re remain for the meeting. Yes, guests may be allowed to stay for the meeting. Of uh, if, I know in some uh, circumstances previously, we would have uh, possibly a guest speaker come at the beginning of a meeting, uh, say his piece and then leave, or at the end of the meeting, come and you know say and then leave. But uh, now, um, yeah, we can, as long as the uh, council is uh, okay with it, we can have guests uh, remain for the meeting. Um, 
All should be advised that only council members in good standing are per permitted to vote during the meeting, but new members and guests should be welcomed upon arrival and grad knights should formally introduce them to the group shortly after the meeting beginning. So this is, uh, it's different. Meetings are to start promptly and end when expected. This is so members do not feel trapped and feel like the meeting is going on forever and ever. And this turns members off. It's like it was me many years ago. In general, a council meeting should not ex exceed one hour. <clears throat> Excuse me. With O Canada, the opening prayer, closing prayer, and other routine elements, only about 45 minutes are available for everything else. Grad nights must be ever mindful of the clock. The recorder should note the attendance of council officers and mention it in the meetings, in the minutes. No need for a formal roll call of officers. A script is also provided in the guidelines in Appendix C of the uh, booklet. Some grad nights use PowerPoint to keep the meeting on track. However, you need to be proficient in using it to ensure your meeting continues. Reading of minutes during a meeting can be time consuming. Sending out the minutes prior to the meeting is best. And the guidelines talk more about that in regards to security of minutes getting out and the whole bit. Uh, the grad night's report gives a vision of where the council is going. It should take no more than 10 minutes to allow other remaining agenda items to be covered. And the lectures talk should probably be during the social part of the meeting. Every presenter at the meeting should only be a maximum of three minutes presenting. Holy moly. <laughs> That's why we, we, you know, we have the uh, uh, executive or planning meeting beforehand, right? This is the council meeting and it's to get there, get the, 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 the meat and the potatoes and done, bang, and then go into, you know, a social part of your evening. Uh, effective grad nights use proper parliamentary procedures. They invite discussion only for motions that are properly made and seconded. And discussions on topics other than motions are best done in committee or small group settings. Once key points are made, grad nights should call for the vote and move on. Unfinished business is for closing out motions that were carried forward from a previous meeting and new businesses where expected motions are made, seconded and discussed. It is not a forum for discussing random topics that were con not considered beforehand by council officers or committees. And good grad, grad nights are quick to table motions for which council leaders are unprepared. They can be brought forward at the next council so meeting under unfinished business. And sometimes it's tough for, for grad nights to, uh, you know, put the hammer down and say, we got to move on. Um, but sometimes it has to be done. And to honor our founder, Blessed Michael McGivney, we should be including the prayer for the canonization of Blessed Michael McGivney as our closing prayer. This is especially important for Knights of Columbus to continue to, continue to pray for his canonization. To actually get the council, the proper council meeting in place, there needs to be the executive or offers, officers planning meeting, which I've already indicated. And here I'll jump to, sl to slide 24. Don't know, that's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, sorry, that my fault, Brother Glenn. Anyways, uh, it, it, it was part of the agenda that we sent out anyways, the, so. Uh, here and um, an agenda is also is included in the guidelines. This meeting is less formal. Any council member may attend. And here details are taken care of that don't interest council members. And you go over new ideas, programs or initiatives and agree upon the agenda for the council meeting. This is the process for council and executive or officers planning meetings in a nutshell. And again, the new guidelines for council meetings booklets is found on the Supreme website and um, and I can give it later on or whatever. And you just scroll down to resources. Um, any questions on this? Anybody email me? It's funny to say that. Okay, if not, I, again, thank you brothers. Did, 
did you want me to talk about my one other thing? Yeah? Okay. I have one, just one other item. I'm not gonna take as long. And it's in regards to the uh, new guidelines for safe environment compliance. And I'm re um, uh, what I'm using is actually the, uh, the uh, SAS Nightline December 2020 issue on safe environment um, compliance as a reference. And uh, it's, it's a good uh, article. Oh, that's it. Thank you, uh, Brother Glenn. Uh, email, I'll just hit on some of the key points. Email addresses will be mandatory for all members holding safe environment roles. That's the grad night program, family and community directors. And this will be for the fraternal year 2020-21. So starting after uh, June 30th, uh, 21. And they will have to be unique and personal to the member. Grad Knights will be barred from holding all four roles. Uh, this practice has never met the standard of having at least two fully compliant members at all events where youth or other vulnerable persons may be present. Uh, this standard is in, is in effect for the 2021 uh, fraternal year still, where you can have the two, um, two, two uh, compliant members. Grad Knights of Councils who fall into this category must appoint at least one more member into either the program, community, or family director role immediately in order for their council to become compliant. So the Grad Knight, of course, could be compliant and they may need another individual, okay, in one of the uh, three other uh, director's roles. For this fraternal year, uh, 2020, 2020, one only having two different members appointed into the four required roles of grad night program, family, community director roles will be allowed. But again, only for the remainder of this fraternal year. And if the grad night presently is holding a director role, it should either be the family or community director role, but not both. And the order safe environment standard is for two fully compliant members to be at all events where youth and other vulnerable persons may be present. One of them has to have had their background check done. And these are the highlights that I gleaned from uh, this article and just wanted to pass it along. But uh, please have a look at the article. And again, if you have any questions of myself or uh, it's also listed there, I believe, on the uh, article, the Office of the uh, uh, Youth Protection at the bottom, I think, uh, gives you their phone number, uh, email address. I know if you have any issues with any, uh, any of the rules being compliant, uh, send an email there. Uh, like they're on, they're on it lickety split. I've, I've had really good, uh, really good service from them. So. Um, I'm not sure, probably no questions for the Glenn or any emails, no, okay. All right, again, um, thank you uh, very much brothers. And uh, again, uh, brother Adrian, thank you very much for spearheading this and Queens House. Uh, this is fantastic. You know, we, we've really moved fast into this age. So uh, thank you brothers, Viva Jesus. Thank you, Brother Dale. One of the things that I do in my council, because I'm also the financial secretary, what I will do is I will send in the financial secretary report probably two days, three days before the meeting to all the executives. So they've already got it. So there is no use talking about it. If there is a question or whatever for clarity, that would, be, that would come at that time. But basically I send my reports in a couple of days before. I was talking to David John today. Now, David is actually in a unique position because he represents a lot of the councils within the country. Most of us are in Saskatoon, Regina, Prince Albert, whatever. But David brings a unique characteristic to the district deputies because he knows what's going on in the country and he feels for the country councils. And so I think David is a tremendous asset to us because he has that unique experience. So David, please.
Good evening, Brother Knights. Yes, uh, and most of my councils are from the rural area and our communities usually are do, do well, doing the link. And uh, so it's hard to get new members in that. But lots of times when you go out to a function and you um, try and get new members, this is sometimes you've, they've been asked three or four times. They might not say they want to join, but they are willing to support you in many ways that they can. And yes, I agree, keep your meetings to an hour, an hour and a half if possible. Stay on track and because out in the rural, you have to drive and sometimes in the winter, you don't know what the road conditions are like at all times. So, and keep your presenters short. That's about all I have to say for now. Thank you. Thank you, David. You know, one of the comments that I heard a while back ago is that, you know, the church doesn't need the Knights. I mean, the Knights have lost their, their flavor. They've lost their, their intensity. And so, you know, the Knights are just kind of like almost old boys club, has been, you know, we're gonna be doing some new things. And, you know, I totally, I totally, totally disagree with that. Because if you remove the Knights of Columbus and CWL from the parish, I believe that parish is in jeopardy. And, and the thing is the Knights of Columbus, we're not a service club because I've been going to a lot of meetings where, with, with service clubs. I'm the representative from chapter going to these service club meetings. They're on the outside looking into the class, wishing they would be in the church. We, Knights of Columbus, CWL, we're on the inside of the church. We're already there. We have the blessings of the Pope, our bishops, our priests. And Glenn, I'm just gonna ask you to do that little clip about uh, Pope John Paul II. This way, you are being faithful to our Savior's command when he said, your light must shine before men so that they may see goodness in your acts and give praise to your heavenly Father. May the Lord continue to bless and strengthen you in his service. May he fill you and your families with his joy and peace. To all of you, I cordially impart my apostolic blessing. This video of Pope John Paul II was uh, given to all the Knights of Columbus at a Supreme Convention. It also was part of the third degree that we used to have. And so this was always given at the end of the third degree, uh, just receiving a blessing from the Pope. I mean, what a tremendous honor for, for us as Knights. That's what I'm saying. We have the blessing of the Pope. We have the blessings of Bishop Mark. 
Bishop Don, who was here before. I mean, they were they were just supportive of the Knights of Columbus. The pastors that we have, we have Father Dennis. We have, you know, all these priests are within our parish that are just supportive of the night. I had lunch with Father Fong, who was part of Our Lady of Lourdes for seven years. And now he's at Holy Spirit. He just loves the Knights. And I mean, he has nothing but good to say about the Knights and how the Knights are needed in the church and how the Knights are responsible in the church. You know, it's no coincidence that uh, Father McGivney was beatified this year. I mean, you know, we're in this pandemic and we're, we're sitting there and I think what's happened with the Knights of Columbus in a lot of councils is the Knights of Columbus has moored their boats into dock. We're afraid of the pandemic. We're afraid of this. We're afraid of being labeled. We're afraid of being fined. We're afraid of all these things. And so we've moored our boats into the dock. You know, brothers, if we don't unmoor these boats here really quick, the Knights of Columbus are not gonna have the integrity that they have. So I, I, I want you to be encouraged by what the Pope has to say, or what the bishops have to say, or what Father Mark is doing, and you know, the year of St. Joseph, and everything that the state deputy is saying, and everything that the district deputies are saying, and your, and your Grand Knights. Brothers, more than ever, the church needs the Knights, needs CWL. We need our agency. We need all those people that are involved. And, and one of the things that happens when, you know, when, we become, when we become married, the natural thing is to have babies. So the natural thing for us is to invite people to join us. You know, one of the things as a Christian, and if you're living your life as a Christian and you're on fire for Christ, people will say, I want what you have. That opens the door for us. As the Knights of Columbus, if we've given our life to Christ and we're sold out for the Knights, just like all of us should be, people say, I want what you have. That opens the door for us to tell them what the Knights are all about. I was so grateful that we were able to have that discussion on Saturday with this young man. I mean, you know, his mom is pushing him to be a knight, which is great. But, you know, I said to him, I said, you got to do what's important for you. Number one is give your life to Christ. And don't fear about the knights. The knights is a tool that God is using, that the church is blessed with, to bring people into the Knights of Columbus, to make men stronger men, more worthy men. That's why I've changed the word worthy men, worthy brothers of Holy Mother Church. This is who we are, brothers. Let's not forget that. This is encouraging for us. Yeah, we're in a time of pandemic. You know exactly what Marty was talking about. We live by faith or by, by fright or by sight, you know. Let's use our faith, the faith that God has given us in our baptism. Let's invite men to be part of us. Let's enjoy being part of us. One of the things I always say is, if you don't like what you're doing, you're in the wrong business. You should love being a knight. You should love being a Christian. You should love being a Catholic. You should love your priests, your bishops. We should love them. And like Frank was saying, we need to tell them like Ron was saying, we need to tell them how they're appreciated, how they're loved. We do that to our wives, we do that to our children. But you know, as men, you know, the word out there was grow up, you know, like be a man. No, 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 no. We all need to be uplifted, ratified, justified, encouraged. We all need that. We're human beings for God's sakes. Let's never forget that. You know, so I just exactly want to, I want to end with that. We need to have a confidence within the Knights of Columbus. It is the work of God. It is the work of the church. And we're part of that. Let's never forget that. So we are in the church. Let's utilize the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us. And let's help the church to build itself. You know, let's evangelize. Let's bring people to Christ. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that we do with that, 
Yes, uh, Glenn, you want to go to um, Knights of Columbus Cluster degree? One of the things that, that we're doing is um, we're having degrees like, like uh, Brother Blair was talking and like Abel was talking. We have mentor members that are online. And so one of the things that the district deputies here in Saskatoon has decided, and I mean, other people from outside Saskatoon can do that as well. We are having a degree. So now the degree takes an hour, just like the meetings are. Like the last degree we had in November, I signed on at 7.03, at 8.03, the meeting was done. We had the degree done, everything was done. It was just slick as a baby's bum. So what we've done is we set up the last Mondays of every month to have a degree. If you have online members, even if you have members that are just first degree, here's an opportunity for them to do their second and third degree. And the reason for that is that we want members to be fully knights, okay? You can't even be a guard without being a third degree knight these days. So basically we want people to move into becoming full nights. So the first degree takes 10 minutes, the second degree takes 10 minutes, the third degree takes 10 minutes. And it's a beautiful degree. One of the things that chapter has done as well to help us with in, in our prayer time and in our life with, with, with the nights is we've dedicated the fourth Sunday for a time of rosary. And so um, you see the dates there, January 24th, all the way down to June. Glenn has them going further throughout the year, but this was set up by Glenn Hauser again, who's been just a tremendous asset to the Knights and also our chapter president. But the fourth Sunday of every month, we encourage people to come and to pray the rosary with us. Invite your wives, invite your children. My sister was in town uh, last month. She joined us for a rosary. Uh, one of the grand knights, his wife was sitting right beside him. Brothers, it's an opportunity for us to pray. And like Marty was saying, we need to pray. We need to pray. Like Father Dennis was saying, we need to pray. This is an opportunity for us to come together and pray. The other thing I want to mention to you as well is uh, one of the things that's happened, um, we're asked to do a couple fraternity benefit nights. Now, Mark Lewin set one up in November. And there was, uh, I, there was a lot of people on this, on this Zoom meeting, that particular one. What, I've talked to the agency about it. And so uh, we have agreed that February the 15th at seven o'clock, and the other one is uh, actually, we want to change that. It's May the 24th. The 17th happens to be the long weekend in, in um, May. So tonight we have actually moved it to the 24th. So what's happening with that is the agency, the brothers, our, our, our agency, the men that we have in Saskatchewan are gonna set up a fraternal night that night. They're gonna send it to the district deputies, to the grand knights. And we ask you, please come on board. Like Blair was saying, the Knights of Columbus has so much to offer. It's an opportunity for us to know what the Knights of Columbus is about and how we can support our families. I just want to encourage you to do that. And like I say, we will get some information from the agency um, when that happens and that'll be happening rather quickly. So please schedule that into your day timers if you can. And same with the rosaries and same with uh, the January uh, degree that's happening here in a couple of weeks. In fact, I just got an email today from Martinsville basically asking because <clears throat> Like, like uh, Brother Abel was saying, I think they have a lot of members online. And so they're going to join us on January 25th with the exemplification. So the exemplification was actually filmed right here in Saskatoon at Our Lady of Lourdes, my church. It was supposed to be done in Regina, but we've done it here in Saskatoon. It is available online, okay? So, um, and Glenn, Glenn will be hosting that as well. God bless him for doing that. So we're gonna be doing that on January the 25th. So if you have any members online, or if you know of any prospects, please bring them to the council. Now the council needs to know what you're doing. So it would be good and prudent for you to send an email to your grand knight if he's not available or your FS. And then once, once that brother becomes a third degree for an FS, it's simple, you just accept him and he's part of your council. 
then you should probably, like Frente is saying, you should probably send him a certificate thanking him for becoming a third degree knight. You should also send him a rosary and a pin that goes with being a third degree knight. So I would encourage you to do that and to uh, be a part of that. Now this is, will be available and we'll send this information as well out to uh, Brother Jerry Gini. And so, uh, <clears throat> so that anybody can do this in the province. Now you don't have to use the video. If you have four good readers in your church, you can actually do that also within your church. Last year, I created 25 booklets um, that most of the Grand Knights have. And so um, it's also available online, the actual printed version. So you can actually do the degree yourself if you choose to do it at your own church. It's kind of tough right now because of COVID. But Is it? Okay. Well, anyways, we're going to, I'll have to talk to Blair. We'll have to work that out here. We may go to the fourth Monday, Blair instead of the third. Sorry. Yeah. Anyways, we're we're gonna work that out here, brothers, and we'll 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 fill you guys in. We're just, you know, the Knights of Columbus are so busy. It's so hard. Like and like Joe Riffle was saying that today. You know, we're setting up some stuff for the DDs. It's so hard to find a free night these days. So we're gonna move it to where we're not trying to take a night away from somebody. But anyways. Uh, we're, we're going to work on that. Blair and I will work on it. And we'll send it out as soon as we can. I want to thank, again, Queen's House, Brendan Bits, for allowing us to come here. It's such a blessing to the Knights. And like Blair was saying, it, it's great for us to be here. And not only that, we're in the chapel besides that. So we certainly want to thank that. I thank Queen's House for, for opening their doors to us. I want to thank everybody for being here, all the presenters. For those that are online, I want to thank you for joining us. This, this meeting is going to be, has been taped. And so um, if you want a link to this meeting, if you want to use it for your own district meetings, or if you want to use it for a good purpose, just let us know. We can send you the link and you'll be able to watch this or stream through it to where you want to go. Okay, thank you very much. This meeting, one of the things that the DDs do in Saskatoon, this is how we have, we call it a cluster meeting, but this is how we have our district meetings. So, um, but for those of you who are in the country and may use this, this information, please do so. Uh, just get a hold of me or, or, uh, or Glenn Hauser and uh, we'll make that available if you so wish. God bless you. I would like to end with a Hail Mary and a glory be. Please stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, my woman, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now at the hour of the Lord, glory be to the Father, Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Grow with the man. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to ask Father Dennis, if he's still online, to give us his blessings, please. So the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, your family, and your friends. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs>